Congresswoman Val Demings is officially now running for U.S. Senate. Demings made that announcement early on Wednesday. We brought it to you as breaking news here on Good Day Orlando. The Congresswoman says that she has a proven track record of leadership and success, both in her career, where she started as a beat officer with OPD, and then, of course, ending her tenure there as chief of police, and then her last 11 years in Congress. Her announcement, of course, sets up a showdown with incumbent Senator Marco Rubio. Senator Rubio took to Twitter to weigh in on his potential opponent. You know, Congresswoman Val Demings is a do-nothing House member with not a single significant legislative achievement in her time in Congress. So in the weeks ahead, the voters of Florida are going to be reminded of my record of significant and common sense achievements. To see his full video as well as Deming's announcement, click on our story, fox35orlando.com. And joining us now to talk more about it is UCF political sciences lecturer John Hanley. Good to see you, John. How are you? Good morning, Amy. Good to see you. So obviously we know this is going to uh, be a hotly contested race here in Florida, but I have a feeling this is, might be one of the most hotly contested races in the entire country. What do you anticipate? I think that's right. I think that... Um, you know, Val Demings is someone who has risen to national prominence because of her role in the first Trump impeachment uh, trial. And Marco Rubio is someone who's been on the national stage. So I think that there's going to be a lot of interest in this race nationally. Florida is always a big state. It's pretty uh, closely poisoned. So I think this is going to be, you know, gaining some attention. So there's a lot of wrangling uh, going into this about who was going to be the front runner in, in uh, this race against Rubio. And obviously other people could still toss their hat in the rings. There was rumblings that uh, Stephanie Murphy was going to toss her hat in the ring. Uh, Aramis Ayala also sort of teased that she might make a run for the U.S. Senate. What happens behind the scenes, John, uh, that these people are talking to each other and saying, no, 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 you wait your turn. I'm going to go, not you. Well, I think that there's, um, you know, a team element to this. Uh, Marco Rubio is still the favorite in this race. I think he's a fairly clear favorite. Um, the Democratic Party is going to want to put their best people at the top of the ticket. Um, so Demings is doing the party a service, and she's giving herself a chance to, to win this race as well. We also know that uh, Senator Rubio had almost an immediate response ready to go uh, as soon as Val Demings made her announcement. I, I suppose that these are all things that are going on behind the scenes that they sort of know what's happening before it's going to happen. Yeah, they're prepped. Uh, the Rubio team is, is going to go with these things, right? They're going to have their attacks ready. Um, they're talking about her as a Pelosi puppet and attaching her to the Biden administration. But I think that there's a lot of time for uh, unscripted things, for unexpected things. As you saw in the 2016 uh, campaign for the presidency, where Rubio was a, a front runner and, and made some mistakes and, and uh, certainly opened the door to Trump. What does Val Demings need to do to try to win over voters? If we know Marco Rubio is the front runner, what can she do to sort of turn the tide in her favor? I think she has to introduce herself to the voters of the state. As a Central Florida uh, member of Congress, she doesn't have the, the prominence in South Florida or in other parts of the state that Rubio has. And so I think for her, a main challenge is going to be to identify, you know, to make herself known in the rest of the state and, and bring out those parts of her biography, like that she was a police chief uh, before the Republicans and Marco Rubio were able to define her as, as just another Democrat. John, what about money? I can't even imagine how much money is probably going to be spent on this one race alone. There's going to be a lot. Um, we saw in the, the 2020 election that there were a lot of candidates uh, who were in races that even weren't terribly competitive for the Democrats who were receiving a lot of money from around the country and activists. And so I think we're going to see on both sides uh, a pretty big number of, of uh, contributions. We're going to be seeing a lot of ads as we get close to 2022. Oh, the political ads. Here they come, John. It's just a matter of time. Thank you so much. Always great to talk to you. UCF political science uh, lecturer John Hanley. Thank you.